Sometimes the universe places people in our lives at exactly the right time for exactly the right purpose. On today's case, Ms. Davis says she was a single mother walking down the street with her baby when Mr. Brown was placed in her life. She says that for eight years, he was a literal godsend who helped elevate her life and helped her raise her daughter. Now Ms. Davis says things have changed and the man she once thought was her soulmate has become nothing more than a lazy roommate who is always either angry, drunk, or out of town. Ms. Davis says it's clear Mr. Brown has checked out of the relationship and she's here to get answers. Is Mr. Brown ready to make a change and save their relationship or has he already served his purpose? Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Davis versus Brown. Thank you very much. Ms. Davis, you are here in court today because you say your relationship is dry and dying. You say you love your fiance, but he is always either angry, never at home, and probably cheating. You need some clarity so you can know what you need to do. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown, you're here because you say you love Ms. Davis, but you feel she's too controlling. You say you haven't been on the same page for a while, but you believe the relationship is worth saving. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Davis, why don't you tell me why we're in court today? Because when we first met, everything was nice up until this point where he's never at home. I asked him to do things around the house. He never does it. And it's like I'm working and doing everything by myself. Like, he's just really lazy. So it looks like you feel you're like you're the only person trying in this relationship. Yeah, I feel like I carry all the way. Your Honor, that's wrong. So I'm gonna come to you, Mr. Brown. You heard what Ms. Davis said. What say you? No, Your Honor, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, Renee, okay, she's a good person. Don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna sit up here and try to bad talk her or nothing. I just know she cooks, she clean, but she like controlling and want me to do everything. It's like, I know I'm older than her and all that, and I love my kid and all that, but it's just something about Renee. She done changed since she got a job now. And uh, I make sure she get up to go to work, and then I make sure my daughter get to school every morning. You know, you know I'm not just sitting there because, you know, I got health issues. Yes, sir, I understand. Yeah, I got health issues. And, I can't drive no more and then because I made sure she went to work every day and picked her up and all that. But now I can't drive no more because I can't see. So let me let me just go back a little bit and figure out how you all met to get to this point. Ms. Davis, I'm gonna turn to you. Tell me about meeting him for the first time. Well, I was walking down the street. I was actually looking for apartments for me and my daughter to stay, and then he just caught my attention. And I walked over and asked him about apartments and stuff, and then it went somewhere else. And we just start kicking it with each other, and eventually we grew into Yo, a relationship. Your Honor, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm gonna tell you, when she was walking down the street with the baby, she was in the stroller, the stroller was like the wheel about to fall off of it. And I, I, I took control of it. It was really supposed to have been a one-night stand. I'm gonna tell you, that's So you I'm... saw a nice looking single lady with a baby yes. that looked like she needed something and yeah, you were like... Yeah, and I, I helped her out that night and it just went on from there. So I stayed with Miss Davis, you know, for her and the baby, you know, to go somewhere. We went to my mom's house, then my brother wind up renting us one of his uh, houses that we had. Were you working at the time, sir? No, ma'am. So, uh, not to be too personal, but, but how, do, how do you take care of the household if you're not working? Look, I'm like a... Uh, I'm a guy like a handyman. You know, they call me Tone in my neighborhood. Now, let's go get Tone. He'll paint the house, he'll cut the grass, he'll do the landscaping. And I, I get a lot of money doing that. So, in other words, whatever jobs that you put together gives you enough financial security that yes, you can take care yes, of Miss Davis and the baby. Is that I, correct? I've I done it all this time. Yes, ma'am. Miss Davis, has Mr. Brown been maintaining the household? Not up until this point, I have. Right, because I live in Warren now. I don't know nobody in Warren. So, so don't sit up there and act like that. You got me out here in the country where I don't want to be. 
Okay. So something else is going on, Ms. Davis, that I'm not aware of. Because I know one of the things you don't like, and I'm looking at you, is you get a sense that there's some anger issues, the manner in which Mr. Brown often speaks to you. You don't like that. Yes, Your Honor, about my eating habits and stuff like that. Well, I'm in recovery and everything, so... What kind of recovery? Um, from drugs and alcohol, so I'm an N.A. And how long have you been sober? I have been sober o- huh? since October 19, 2019. Good for you. And and I'm see, proud of him. I'm proud of him. 100%. Yeah, I'm very, very, proud. very, very, very good. And see, see, I'm about to Robert, this is the thing that I love. You see, she knew the exact date. Yeah, I'm proud of her. She's a good mom and everything. And I'm getting really emotional now because she came a long way, Your Honor. And I'm so proud of her. Now I don't know what to do. And that's why I want to... I don't know if we're going to work out. I don't know. Should I just leave and just let it go? So let's see if we can't figure out if there's still anything there left for you all as a family and as a couple. But you have to tell me, why is it that you say he has anger issues? Because when it comes to me snacking and stuff like that, like I mentioned, I'm in recovery, you know... So I'm not doing the other stuff. So now I'm turning to snacks. Uh oh. So you replace one addiction for another. Yeah. So as you're in recovery and you're snacking, you don't think that your um, boyfriend is being um, sensitive enough. Is that what it is? Yeah. Like he's rude and say real mean things when I'm snacking and stuff like that. What do you mean real mean things? Like if I ask him to go to the store to get me a bag of chips or something like that, I'm not buying you no chips. Renee, would you really? Stop that. No. So... Your Honor, at night time at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm in the bed. I think I'm in the bed with a rat because I hear chips and stuff crumbling. Ms. Davis, what's left between you other than your baby girl? I feel like it can... We can revive our relationship if we have, like I said, better communication skills, you know, a kiss on the cheek or just... You know, let me know that you're there. I does that, Your Honor. You don't kiss me or hug me at all. Do you think your snacking is out of control? Not as far as I'm concerned. Right. I could see, Your Honor, if I was out in the streets, and doing what I used I'm to do, that should be a problem. But I feel like as far as me snacking and stuff at night is something I've been doing before the drugs, before the alcohol. I've always woke up out of my sleep looking for cookies and chips and stuff like that. You and I've been doing it for years. So it's something that I need to work towards. Maybe you, know. you need to go to Cookie Anonymous or something. No. Maybe you, you, you know, Mr. I, Mr. Brown, I'm sorry, you made no, a joke, but they have Overeaters <laughs> Anonymous. They do. They have Overeaters Anonymous. They do. Because it's an addiction. And, and I don't think people realize that having been somebody who was severely overweight, I can tell you that there are lots of recovery opportunities, if that's something you want. But I really want to focus on what else is going on in your relationship right now. Our uh, sex well, life I mean, is that. horrible. Like, we don't... It's like he get up and whatever he done, and that's it. There's no... Nothing. So, you, you, there's no romance? No. None. There's no ever nothing whatsoever. Yeah, I can imagine it didn't start out like that. No. no. Um, when we first got... Ooh, it, it was on and popping. So, what now, happened? Ask her. Miss mm. Davis, what happened? I really don't know. I, I mean, don't... how does it go from on and popping to... None and stop. Nothing. <laughs> I feel like the interest <laughs> level laugh. the interest level for him is not high enough and not for me either really like Okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna ask the tough question to both of you. And I'm gonna answer it too. Miss Davis, what's left between you other than your baby girl? I feel like it can we can revive our relationship if we have like I said better communication skills and just let me know that he's there. Like, the simplest thing, give me a hug or, you know, a kiss on the cheek or just, you know, just let me know that you're there. Mr. Brown, you heard what Ms. Davis said. I do... I does that, Your Honor. You don't kiss me or hug me at all! Help me to understand how this dynamic works. Do you all 
even sleep in the same no, room? No, I sleep on the couch. Because you got to be in front of a TV all the time and... Like mostly, I had to watch at, divorce court. When we at home or whatever, on the weekend, <laughs> on the weekend he's going to Cleveland. We live in Warren, Ohio. He's going to Cleveland on the weekends with his friends. But I feel like he's doing more than just being with his friends. I feel like he you got a female I'm just down there kicking it with, out there that he talks to. Are you suggesting that your boyfriend is cheating on you when he's in Cleveland? Mm -hmm. Do you think that? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Brown, I'll Yo, ask you. I, that's not happening. But I know she cheating with that boy at your job. You is. That's why you're sitting up there laughing. No, I'm laughing. That man, when she needs something, Your Honor, okay, I'm, in, I'm out here way from Cleveland, right? I'm out here where I can't go get nothing because, I, you know, like I told you, I was a handyman out there, good grass, paint. I don't know nobody out there where I can't get no money. Right, you can't get your network together. I can't get my network. But she go to work. She needs something. She, she come back with money, uh, cigarettes, all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, I got to And pay. so, Mr. Brown, you're suggesting that somebody is beating your time. I she, she doing it. So, Ms. Davis, just like I turned to Mr. Brown, I'm going to turn to you. Time to come clean. Are you getting what you want out of this relationship? Not as of now, no. Mr. Brown, Ms. Davis says I that I ain't she's... going through that. I ain't no way I ain't going with that. I don't care if me and her ever see each other again. That's still my child. Well, he's thinking wrong. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Are you Try involved clean. with somebody else? No, I am not. Why does Mr. Brown think that you are having an illicit relationship with one of your coworkers? Why? That's about how close y'all is. Tell the because judge we clo Tell we're the judge how close y'all is. We're just friends. We're coworkers. If I'm short on cash or something like that, he'll help me out. So I got to tell you something, Ms. Davis. I'm not sure that my husband Thank would you. want me to be Thank taking you, money from some other man. Thank you, yo. What makes you think that that's OK? <laughs> He's just a friend. I, I don't see... You know what? Friends that give you money usually turn into friends with benefits. And I ain't got no woman He's friend just that not give giving me no me money. money. I pay it back to him. Oh, so my you're telling me he loans you money? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I loan him money. But why would you need to go to a, another man for assistance? Help me to get that. Because sometimes he does not have it, so... I got to figure out other ways to keep moving ahead now, until I get paid again. Out some so, ways. Yeah, you have your man at home thinking that if you are getting money from another man, maybe you're exchanging favors. That's what he's going to think. Well, he's thinking wrong, and I don't do none of the above, so... So you're asking him to trust that you're being faithful? Yeah. Mr. Brown, Ms. Davis says I that I ain't she's... going through that. I ain't no way I ain't going with that. No, I'm from the old school. My daddy told me that ain't no woman got no business being friends with another man. Now, I have plenty of male friends. Okay, Robert's one I of my good friends. friends. But I'm not borrowing money from them. Well, now, that is out true. And doing that with them. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm definitely not borrowing money from yeah. Robert. That's not appropriate. Because if I borrow money from... If a woman borrow money from me and I keep getting into it, guess what, Your Honor? You gonna be a friend Ooh, with benefits. you think I ain't? You think I ain't? I'm trying to figure out, you all, because one of the things that you both wrote down in your court papers was that you lo both love your little girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love her to death. If and me and her ever break up, that's still my daughter. I don't care if me and her ever see each other again. That's still my child. So, Ms. Davis, are you getting what you want out of this relationship? Not as of now, no. Mr. Brown, are you getting what you want out of this relationship? I think this relationship over. You think it's over? Yep. Ms. Davis, would you agree? No. You want to make the relationship work? Mm hmm Well, I'm going to tell you, here's the thing. I usually have these signs of whether or not you've outgrown your partner. So I was just trying to figure out if, where you all come in. So the first one is your goals in life are different. And I'm trying to figure out what your goals are because you all have not articulated them to me. 
You're moving in different directions, and that's very clear. The patterns in your relationship are not healthy. That's very clear. Being together is draining. Lord, y'all draining me, so I know you drain each other. <laughs> you feel ashamed of your partner, and I'm telling you, Mr. Brown, even though you don't call your partner out of her name, you make her feel bad about her know. weight uh, and her snacking. Okay, I understand. You don't enjoy the same couple activities anymore. Y'all never told me anything fun that you're doing together. You talked about what you do separately. You know what? The funnest we did, we went to go see who? Freddie Jackson. Now, that should be a romantic <laughs> Yeah, evening. we went to go see mm -hmm. Freddie Jackson at the concert and stuff like that. See, before I got with Renee, you know, I always traveled and did stuff. You know, I went out and did... But I had tried to get her to get up and do... She want to lay in bed all day. I don't think that's where we are at this point. I All think right. that at some point, I you both have to determine whether or not staying together for the sake of your child is smart. Yeah, I love my daughter, too. Because I think at some point, you're going to have to decide how to co-parent. Yeah. Because it's clear that you, as a couple, are not on the same page anymore. And, Ms. Davis, unless Mr. Brown and you are willing to meet halfway, I don't see a lot of hope for this relationship. And that makes me sad because you came together and through trauma and you were able to make it work and it became something wonderful and you've achieved so much as a result of that. No and I, I just wonder for the sake of me if you can't push through this uncomfortable time and try to get back to what... Mr. Brown, you saw when you saw Ms. Davis. You were her knight in shining armor. And Ms. Davis, you thought that Mr. Brown and you could make a life together. Is there anything there, Mr. Brown, that you think you could find your way back to each other? Yeah, yeah, because I do love her. I do love her. And so... And I don't want... I don't want nothing but the best for her. But do you want the best for her with you or I outside think... of you? That's the real question, sir. I want the best for us. I, I do want the best for me. So I think, quite frankly, what you both need is to sit down with a third party and talk through what it is you need in each relationship. Because, Your Honor, me and her have been through so much. I know. Together. And if you've been through so much and you have a little girl who depends on both of you, I'd just like to remind you, your daughter is learning how to become a woman. And more importantly, she's learning how to be treated like a woman by the man in her life. You really yeah. do owe it to her to act in mature ways together. And if you can't act in mature ways together, you must learn to act in mature ways separately for her benefit. If you'd like to have a third party help you out with couples therapy, I'd be very happy to provide you with that information. Otherwise, I think it's time for you all to put a pin in this right. because it's over. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate your time. Well, Robert, I'm... I'm lost as to why they're even still together. I mean, I could understand that he helped her out a lot in the beginning. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes it's okay to say thank you for being there for me at that time. Right. I mean, you know, there's a time, a reason, and a season for every relationship. Right. I think their time is up because mm -hmm. the reason is gone. Right. right. And it's a season for change. Exactly. Holla.